Please welcome Jason Prather. So I'm going to tell a story uh, about myself and about the company I work for, Plex Systems. Um, in Plex, in a simplistic way, we deal with combining manufacturing and technology. But the story starts much, much further ago. So I grew up in Detroit, and like many people, I, I grew up in a family business, small manufacturing company. And like most kids I grew up with, Saturdays were filled with getting donuts, going to the shop, and working. And whether that was turning machine, or filling out time tickets, or payroll, or whatever it may be, that was our Saturday, that was our family time together, was in the shop. And it introduced me a lot of new things um, around what it meant and the innovation that had gone into manufacturing. And my dad was always the great historian who kind of took me through what it was like in his day. And over time, Things grew and eventually I got the opportunity to go to college, right? And I was the first Prager ever to go to college. And my mom and dad were very proud that they worked so hard and were able to do that for me. And so I went to uh, Great Liberal Arts College, uh, Albion College in the middle of the state. And eventually I studied computer science, right? And the real driver, right, for me was uh, I liked the rapid innovation, the ability to, to dream of something and deliver it that night. It really fit my ADD at the time, and many would probably joke I still had that. But eventually, over time, I uh, went to work for Plex after college, and I thought this is a great fit, part of my past, part of the future, putting them together. And so I was able to work on some great things that I thought, build some great innovation. And over time, though, I felt like I was missing something. Missing, missing a part of my past, part of my history. And so I went back to the family business. Right? And this time I got to use the stuff I built. And it wasn't that great, but whatever. You could, the, other, the part of it that was exciting to me was to have a different set of eyes as I looked out to the plant. Because I've always been about making something, I've always enjoyed the creation of things, whether it be physical or virtual, it didn't really matter. But you get to see these giant environments with machines as big as houses. Right? But there was a surprising thing that was happening the people were incredibly mobile, right? And watching them interface with technology was very clumsy because they have to go walk to a PC and type something in to go back to making something with their hands. And so came back to Plex after a bit and got to see what I've used the next trends in mobility, right? And the mobility really applied to the people right on the floor. And with things like Google Glass and wearables, it's a possible we're finally going to see the connection of people doing things and interacting with technology without having to touch it and keeping their hands free. And so Google Glass, obviously, the first generation, right? I, I kind of equate it back to cell phones, right, in 2005. They could dial, they could text, maybe email if they were up to it, but that's it. But now, after generations, they've refined it. And so the Google Glass, right, you walk if you can imagine, you put them on, you can walk up to a box, pick it up, and say, okay, class, what's in the box? Right, and I'll tell you, and that's fantastic. But I like to look farther forward at what can happen in the future. So there's obviously wonderful applications for Fitbit, you probably can't see mine on here, but I, I'm counting how many steps I have while I'm on the stage. <laughs> but I think the next step is around things like a safety vest, right? Manufacturing environments are inherently dangerous. And when I was in the plant, the most dangerous job, or scariest, was driving a forklift. Right? You had somebody that you wanted to be fast, right? but not too fast to kill somebody. It was a very scary but real thing. And so imagine we have Susie driving a wonderful 6,000 pound forklift with about 7,000 pounds of steel in the front, cruising around a corner at 35 miles an hour. She has no idea what's in front of her, and unfortunately her co-worker Andrew is there. She can't see him, things don't end well. <laughs> in the future though, with wearables, that's, imagine now that same scenario, but Andrew has a safety vest. But not just any safety vest, it's just transmitting where he is at. 
So as Susie comes around the corner, a little heads-up display tells her, Andrew's around the corner. Now Susie has a choice. <laughs> right? These are the things that we're going to continue to see. I think it's really the second wave of wearables I'm going to go to. But mobility doesn't just start with and stop with the people. It also is the things that manufacturers create. Right? By their very design, manufacturers buy raw materials, do their magic, then sell them to somebody. Ever since the dawn of manufacturing, the hardest thing to know is what's going on through that entire process? What is happening in the magic? And so, Right now, we're at the a new beginning of Bluetooth-enabled devices. And what's great about Bluetooth is that you don't need anything fancy, right? My phone, I can try to take it off to come up here, but anything can connect to it, right? They can connect to each other and create a beautiful network of communication. And right now, we're just starting to see things released like Tile or Tracker that will relay the location, like, I am here, right? Which is a great beginning because you don't have to do anything. You just move the item and it tells us where it's at. But there's a future, right? Imagine these Bluetooth sensors that did more than just tell location. Imagine if they could track what that experienced from a humidity standpoint, or a temperature, or a vibration. So back in my manufacturing days, we used to have these great complex parts that we used to send out to get welded. And they were very sensitive to vibration, right? And Michigan roads didn't really help. <laughs> it's a lot of times that they, the vibration make it so you couldn't weld it. So we get back all these bad parts. Imagine if when we have these devices that on these parts, we would be able to track how rough the road was and be able to relay back to us and say, hey, this container shook too much. You're not going to want to weld it, right? But that's only the four walls of a manufacturer. The next step is beyond and giving that data up into the consumer, right? Putting these part, things on thing, uh, cars and sub-assemblies, and watching them go out to the field. And then getting data back that we can help tell the consumer what's going on. So a great one would be, gee, this car was exposed to flooding conditions on nine mile and 75. <laughs> Maybe you don't want to drive it because you might start a fire, right? That's the future of that mobility of data and connectivity of data as it continues down. Right? As you can see, Detroit has always been this manufacturing mecca. It always is, it's in our blood, right? Mine, yours, it's just a part of who we are. But we're also starting to become in, in a, the technology, right? And I truly think that as we continue forward, the merging of those two special traits of who we are is gonna lay the foundation for a new Detroit, a better Detroit, and one for us all. Thank you.